Okay, welcome to the Focus Podcast. We are here with members of Fifth Project. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. You gotta, yeah, I just swivel microphone today. Uh, this is my first time with two guests, so welcome. This is going to be uh, interesting. And uh, yeah, we've been doing this for on and off for like five years. Uh-huh. So I did it. Oh. It was like radio. It was just um, audio for a while for the first 15 and then the lockdown, I kind of turned it into an interview style That's cool. uh, on camera. So I had like the, the I think it was called Restream. It was a, a program that I used that helped you uh, get guests in and stuff like that. Okay. And then just like, I don't know, a month ago, I started with the in-person. I had my dad here first and then uh, I've had a couple guests and now you guys. Cool. Yeah, so welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you yeah. for having us. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, uh, give us a little uh, introduction. <laughs> Go ahead, Tara. <laughs> Seriously? You're the talker, but okay. Um, or just, yeah. when did you guys get started doing music? Yeah, well, um, we started well, a long time ago, yeah. 2003? I think so. 2003? Yes. We'll go back. We'll go with 2003, a really long time ago. Um, I saw an ad online. I had been doing music by myself for maybe a year or more, I'm getting pretty bored of my own ideas. So I was just reaching out to bands and I saw an ad online. This was kind of like mp3.com times. I probably should. Oh, you know yeah. what I no, mean? I'm, you're, you're in the same ballpark here. I'm, yeah. yeah. So it wasn't on mp3.com. That's just the era. So things were kind of new. I feel like things were kind of new and fresh. I like music on the internet and stuff. Yeah. Like oh, that's extremely fresh. Yeah. Like, it was exciting. Um, and so, yeah, you guys had kind of something going on for about six months, I guess, and... Auditions. Auditions. Yeah, yes. looking for... You can talk about We were looking things. for you. <laughs> yeah, we were auditioning Aww, for you. shucks. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, so Tara responded, and I heard she had an album out, and she won an award for it. Oh, and, nice. And, um, but as she said, she was looking for something else, like, uh, to expand upon. Like, she's a composer. She did, she, the album she did, she um, did all the... Um, arrangement and, and play the instruments and stuff like that. So um, I thought everybody did that. Yeah, yeah me too. Me too <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Except for Lonnie. all Canadian artists do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Apparently not, but no, no, some yeah. do. Yeah. But we had a uh, Tara came out on my birthday actually, and uh, for an audition, and that's when uh, that's when we met in person. Mm-hmm. And um, our drummer didn't show up that day. Yeah, that's right. He went to the other side of town. But. Cool. Do we have to pause things? No, no, no. I just forgot to keep this uh, going. So oh. I'm running the show on my own here. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah keep going. No. Uh, uh, yeah. But we um, we played through some of your your uh, songs and and just, I think, noodled on it. And then you came back. She was living in Fergus, which is quite the drive. I got lost um, in Fergus one time. Trying to find... No, I was trying to find... I was going to see my girlfriend in Burlington, actually. Yeah. And I oh. called my dad. He's like, "How the fuck did you get in Burgers?" Like, oh wow! Yeah, you were way off a uh, yeah. course there. Anyways, uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you you met uh, then. Yeah. And what was where was the first venue you guys played? You don't remember. Do you remember? Was it the cathedral? Yeah. Oh. It was either that or B side. I honestly don't remember our first show. <laughs> oh, the cathedral. You know what I mean, Bar Cathedral, because that's... No, like, with a K. Um, the, oh. What was it? It was the Reverb and the Cathedral. Yeah. It was the Big Bop building. The Big Bop. That's right. Holy Joe first. first there. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we have some things 2003. in 2003. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Same... No, we were 2004. I, I think our second show was at the B-Sides, which is a building that no longer exists, but, or a venue too, but like the yeah. building was bought by the city. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Thanks. I'm pretty sure it was the cathedral because I remember we were just talking about this the other day. How I didn't want to stand in the middle of the stage because I was like too chicken. Uh, yeah. So I got our bass player to stand in the middle of the stage, and I was off to the side, and I was basically just like not even looking at the audience. <laughs> yeah. But then uh, we had to change that immediately because Peter called you a name. Our bass player had a microphone, basically, and yeah. we needed to take it away from him. Oh, bass player shouldn't have a microphone. Oh. <laughs> well, he's kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. He, uh, he Sorry, reminded... bass player. Yeah. <laughs> we love you, bass player. It, it, was, it was nothing that Peter said. I think he, until, like, for 
many years he's harbored this uh, belief that I thought that he was horrible on stage and that's why he shouldn't have a microphone. Oh. And I was like, and, and he's oh. recounted what he said. And in it, he called me a name. And that's why I said, you're never doing that again. Because he called me Jimmy Page. So. <laughs> Which isn't cool. Because you're using a bow. That's not cool. Yeah, it's not cool. I didn't rip off Jimmy Page. Well, at least yeah, you guys I didn't are, even know he played with a bow, honestly. At least you're, you're not uh, Pink Floyd beefing, that's all. That's no, I like that. Yeah. We also like Led Zeppelin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've, learned to, I've learned to like them. They're, they're excellent players. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're great cover, covers, cover artists. <laughs> yeah, we come from the same era for sure. I started pretty much uh, 2001. This guy I met at school, and uh, we started messing in the radio labs. We started uh, just recording on cart, transferring uh, like little bits of instrumentals at the end. We would transfer it over and then loop it onto a cart, mm-hmm. and then put it on the program, and then just get start rapping over it. Oh, so cool. we started figuring out how to make stuff. We were like the first, I went to the television broadcast school and we were like the first uh, to use digital programs. Like we okay. were the very first year. So we were like the guinea pigs. Mm-hmm. It was like uh, Premiere mm-hmm. and uh, Saw was the program, the audio program that mm-hmm. we were using. Mm-hmm. So it was all brand new. It was pretty, so I used, I utilized a lot of my time in school to make music and uh yeah and then uh we came to toronto here and just started trying to find shows it did shows at like uh cadillac lounge oh yeah and uh yeah you remember that spot yeah yeah that's great spot yeah 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 Yeah, uh, do you have any memories there you guys oh no i just they used to have a really cool open jam night yes yeah so i used to go there just to watch people sometimes yeah i never i didn't want to lug my gear down yeah. there without a, if I wasn't playing a show so but uh, I just like going there's a lot of great musicians who would show up there yeah. and I don't know it was always a fun vibe it was a cool cool vibe to go to it had a good spot because it had like this uh, area in the back like the outdoor patio mm-hmm. yeah. in the back and you, you felt like you were kind of separated yeah. from yeah. the rest of the bar because it is Parkdale and has like it's characters coming mm-hmm. in oh, out yeah. of the bar yeah. but you felt like you were completely in a different bar all the way yeah. back there yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was my first gig with a band. So I had like uh, a few band members. Did you meet them at uh, at school? No, uh, no. Uh, for that, actually, one of the the guitar player was uh, dating my sister. Uh, so I know he that he was doing music for a long time. The uh, the drummer was my brother. He was like fifteen oh, years old. Cool. Yeah, and then my bass player was uh, my buddy. He's been doing a lot of stuff with me. We did one gig and then my sister and him broke up. So I was like, well, I can't, <laughs> I can't have him in the band now. <laughs> so it was a one off. So we did one show. And then years later, I, I managed to get uh, a few guys together. We had a band. And then that kind of dissolved uh, after one show. Okay. And then what you guys saw when I, when I met you guys at the Horseshoe, that was my third attempt at a band. Oh, cool. So finally I got it and they're into it. And we did. Uh, that was the first show I think we did together. No, sorry, we did one at Painted Lady. Mm-hmm. And then we did, uh, when we met you guys, that was the second time we had played together. And cool. we've done maybe more than a dozen now, since then. Yeah, we've been back there since. We went. We were there in February. At uh, the Horseshoe? At the Horseshoe, yeah. Wow. And that was one of our uh, better gigs. Other Lee's Palace was my favorite, actually. Yeah, yeah. We've yeah. a good time. Yeah. That was... Um, I don't know if I told you guys this, but uh, they took my mic. They stole my microphone. <laughs> they stole it? Or they didn't, or Did not you? stole I don't think they purposely stole it, but um, I have the footage too. And it's a wide shot, and you guys had just finished. Mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry. I had just finished, and then Dr. Key's band was after us. And it was my fault too, because I should have take, took my mic with me right I oh, left it yeah and then I didn't think of it and then I didn't realize until I had got home and I was like shit I was doing my inventory I'm like where's my stuff and then I think I messaged you guys and I was like yeah. you know that happens all the time people like just grab something yeah. yeah and it's just like that looks the same or we have the same gear 
And I was just like, uh, where did it go? And then I was like, oh, let me check the tape. So yeah. I checked the tape and he put it in his pocket and I'm like, that can mean anything. Yeah. Like he could. They usually do that. That's pretty normal. For well, just to get it off the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand your hands are full and yeah. I work in that too. But anyways, I went there a month later and my friends were playing there. So I came and I spoke to the front of house guy and he's like, oh yeah. I, that guy was working that night so he calls him and he's like yeah I did find a mic and he put it in my bag oh. and I was like okay can you bring it here or can I come, come get it to you and he's like he's on the phone with the guy he's like yeah he'll email you and I was like okay so I tried reaching out to him nothing I reached back to the club all the people that were involved in arranging the, the last gig and yeah. nobody got back to me and I was like that's weird. Lessons learned, I guess. Yeah. Well, that was my fault in a way because you know those things happen. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it's just yeah, you gotta take care of your own shit, really. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's been the pick holders. Yeah, you're not allowed. Mm. To <laughs> Literally not allowed. Apparently, you didn't get them anymore. The ones that stick on the microphone stand because I just leave them there. Oh yeah. <laughs> like it adds up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in debt now. Not a microphone, but <laughs> yeah. it adds up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I can. Let's. Those are lower cost things. That uh, I can imagine if you leave like a uh, something from the drum kit or something. Uh, yeah, uh, that'd be a lot more. Yeah, microphones are not are not a cheap loss though. It's not like a microphones are expensive. Yeah, and that was mine. That was like somebody gave that to me. It's like the the, oh. the sound guy at the Air Canada Center gave it to me, and okay. I've been using it for like eight years. Mm. I was like, that was. Ah. What kind of mic was it? It was a, a Sennheiser, uh, I think it was an SM35 or something. Okay. Just a really good hand mic. Like, okay. I just yeah. brought it with me everywhere. Yeah. And uh, it works well. You know, you have something that works well. Yeah. And yeah. You're just like, I want to use it everywhere. It's your tool. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a little discouraged after that. Yeah. But other than that, the night was amazing. It was perfect. I was pretty impressed that we did that many people. Yeah, oh, yeah. It was a good time. February night. Yeah. It was, it was, I was impressed. Um, so you guys have been through like a few uh, kind of transitions as a band. So like how many, uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for is like uh, different looks have you had to the band? Different like, looks? Like you've had art. Uh, like, like design or? Uh, no, like um, has it always been the same sound or are you kind of like evolved into the, the sound or is like you've had different members? Uh, the core group you have now, how long you guys been together uh, doing music? It's, yeah. Uh, we have our original bass player right now. Okay. Um, but we just got a new drummer like six weeks ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so <laughs> um, we're just get right now getting together to play for live shows. Um, but yeah, as far as the, the sound changing, I think it's... The first thing we did, Circadian, our first full length, was just kind of like getting to know you. Mm -hmm. Like all of us kind of, here's what I've got, here's what I've got. Let's put it together and see what we've got. Mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of realized there was a concept going on. And so kind of expanded more into the concept. And then I think since then we're like, what's our concept, right? And mm -hmm. then we work toward like a, a project basically every time like something with a lot of intent um so i guess yeah as far as our sound changing or i i don't i have no idea i think i'm too far in to know well i guess that's a sign of you guys evolving because you you don't know you don't have a exact uh explanation on like a sound right Cause me too i'm like well i sounded like this when i was 30 mm -hmm. and this album's completely different like mm -hmm. it's a different and people I get kind of stumped like that when people are like well what what's your music like and I'm like well I don't know <laughs> it's changing all the time like yeah. it's different style it evolves and if anybody's hearing jackhammers they're, they're I would, yeah. ripping the city up out here yeah they're tearing they're, up the sidewalk yeah. yeah well they do it fast here it's a rich neighborhood so oh, okay. <laughs> there's a lot of letter writers here yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to be stuff. one of those people but not because I was rich just because yeah. <laughs> Well, the letter writers get shit done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where do you guys live? Are you guys in the central, west end? Uh, yeah, High Park, Roncesville area. Okay, yeah. I, I lived uh, down at the bottom of 
Nazi for a long time. Oh, cool. On yeah. Marion. Yeah. 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 Cool. I lived, spend a lot of time in the West End. Yeah. We like born in uh, Parkdale, actually. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. 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 St. Joe's there. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Was I born there? No, I was born at Women's College. But in okay. Film, uh, yeah. My dad spent time at St. Joe's when he was 16. He had, like, his lung was removed. Uh, he had oh, his boy. Lung, lung issues. Oh, at 16? Yeah, they, I think they pronounced him dead. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's crazy. He has a huge scar. So it's like, it was a great don't smoke uh, advertisement. Not that he smoked, that's not why yeah. he had a problem, but it was just like when you see somebody who's gone through that kind of trauma, you're just like, I don't ever want any problems with my lungs, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah I do. You know. I guess you didn't smoke, I guess. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Yeah. Like, no, cigarettes aren't my thing. That's no, mine sure. either. Yeah, I tried to. I tried that to impress a girl when I was sixteen years old, and I'm yeah. just, I think I puked. I, had, <laughs> oh, God. I smoked camels. It was that like was I, impressive. Yeah, I was. Oh, that's impressive. harsh, right off yeah, the bat, man. That's like uh, let me go the hardest I can go. I was, yeah, I was on an exchange program in Switzerland, and there, I, was, there was a bar, and there was like back in the day in. You could go and get cigarettes from a. Oh, bar everybody machine. smokes there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah. so it was just the different t- colors of camel. And because yeah. there was a, a Philip Morris, like a camel uh, factory in the town that I was staying at, which yeah. was Neuchatel, and, um, which I had a, a, a tour of. And they gave me a pack, like Bruce Willis, I think, from Die Hard with a foil yeah. thing. Yeah. So I got a foil pack thinking, I'm, you know, I'm going <laughs> to you know, be real cool. Yeah. Did the thing. I got that all right. Did the, <laughs> lit it up and almost died, like dead. <laughs> After that. Yeah. And, oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not cool, man. I'm not <laughs> so that's the fine. movie's overdo it. Yeah. 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 Well, it, it, this was. I think I was in some kind of like comedy. I didn't know I was in. Like, yeah, yeah. It was that kind of film where I was the I was the punch in the bed. comedy of life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I uh, I tried smoking when I was 16. It just didn't work. Mm-hmm. No, no, not for me. And in Europe, everybody smokes. They, it, they smoke do. when they're like four years old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tara can tell you stories about smoking. Oh, yeah, I smoke forever. <laughs> I think probably from like 13 to, I don't even remember, 33 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At one point, it was like, do I want to sing or do I want to smoke? Yeah, that's <laughs> you know? that just saying, you got a like, choice, mm, not one or the other. Definitely not smoke. Yeah. And I did have a, I think this was when I wasn't smoking, but I did get a lung infection for like, not an infection, like walking pneumonia for about 11 months. Ooh. And um, during that time, I was re- actually recording my solo and then like a solo album. And I wanted to release it. And I like screwed up our, our like the project production schedule because I'm like, I got to release this. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't realize I didn't tell anyone because I think I'm probably going to die. Yeah. <laughs> and Scott's like, why didn't you tell me that? I'm like, I thought it was obvious. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, so no smoking for me either. Mm. Just weed now and then. Yeah, ditto. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys, uh, do you have, I, I noticed a lot of your material it has kind of this uh, a theme. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, temples, uh, a lot of like, I opened a door there, right? You can, <laughs> you can open any door. Let's open some yeah, doors. Yeah, Here yeah, we yeah, go. Sure. All right, let's go. Um, and you guys have taken a few trips to see uh, some temples. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Um, so my question is, so so my uh, my thing too, I found out kind of like my identity as an artist or, or art, a musician or band. Uh, when I found out the, his- the history of my family's uh, grinding family history from Italy Mm -hmm. so when I found that out I was like okay this is kind of like me as an artist Uh, now I can kind of like build a brand around it I guess because everybody's always like you gotta have a brand you gotta have this and this and this and then you're like you're like well I'm not a very brand type of person or an artist and then it just happens and you're like okay this is the theme and I can't guess that's the same as branding right so my question is, is like, when did you guys really kind of find that uh, theme? Uh, um, yeah, I guess. So. Okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> and what is the theme really? Like, I, I, maybe I'm just touching on it. A oh little yeah, bit. yeah. yeah. Um, well, fifth project is this and like us, like 
it's the human human like fifth element. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that too. Yeah, there's like the the number five has a lot of uh, esoteric significance, um, and it has to do with you know creativity. Um, also, the, the sacred feminine um, is represented, and the the number five um, and the sacred feminine come from a, a relation between the planet Venus, its orbit in relation to Earth, yeah. creates a star, like a star, a pentagram. Yes. So um, it has like a, a crossover of five nodal points. You can check, what's it called? The, the Rose of Venus the orbit, Rose of Venus orbit. If anybody wants to check that out on YouTube or whatever, there's a bunch of little animations that show you where that comes from. And so that's apparently, according to the some ancient traditions I shouldn't say all say this but um, some ancient traditions that's where the like the the pentagram comes from in, in its significance yeah. so pre-Roman era yes like um, before the organized religions that exist now there was something that's called pagan and that has it, it's, you know that has a lot that's a loaded a loaded term but um, it's a it, you know it just refers to people from the country who had uh, like nature as their it wasn't a religion it was more like a spiritual relationship with yeah. nature itself and so like just understanding that our place in this in this world as a human being and our projection of what it means to be like we're a conscious projection into this you know five-fold meat suit 5d really. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. We're, well, well it's like a I don't know, you want to, you can call it virtual reality, but I think that's just like, that's almost insulting life, you know, and like the experiences that we have and the, the metaphysical kind of qualities of it that have kind of been hidden and you can even see that in the major religions right now. Um, they all have the symbolism that will lead you to like the esoteric path and that's called the occult. Yeah. And the occult isn't something like that is, I don't even know how to describe it. It other than the word itself means the hidden, like that yeah. which is hidden, and so it's not like it's it's a, a system of belief or worship or anything. It's just an understanding of a knowledge of Revealing. nature. Yeah, yeah. what's yeah. already there, yeah. stuff that's already in place. Yeah, and, and it's just opening your eyes to it. Yeah, um, yeah, that's cool. When did you guys really kind of uh, hone into that? Like, like when was that? Like, this is going to be our. You don't really def say like this is a moment, but I think there's a, a moment where like you I don't know you make a few songs and you're like hey this is kind of like the same um, theme and it's building into kind of an identity of a band. I, I couldn't really identify a time. I think this is just how we both came into this together. I think and it's just I mean can you identify it? Oh, you go ahead. Um, since we're getting this topic, <laughs> um, I, there was a day and was yeah, Ooh. what's that? Nice. I'm excited. What was it? <laughs> oh, it was, well, it was kind of before there was any, it was, it, it was the moment of, it was kind of like, if you go on the hermetic path or, uh, the mysteries, the school of the mysteries, the mystery schools, how there's a whole bunch of different names for it. Consciousness creates reality. So material, the material realm came from a higher realm, a higher dimension, if you will, of consciousness. And uh, so I was having a meditation and it was very cosmic and this all came in. Yes, that moment. Yeah. And this was before I met her or before I asked my other friends to get involved who I was playing in a couple different bands with. So almost like a, a pre notion or something? What's that? I think that's the term. Like uh, pre precognition, yeah, uh, pre yeah, premonition, yeah, premonition. Like a message from a very specific place, wasn't it? Yeah. Like how weird do you want to get <laughs> today? <laughs> <laughs> we can go all the way weird, uh, but I I I kind of delved into that um, esoteric, um, you know, theology type of rabbit holes uh, as I was making my second album. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, you know about the. What's the hex? The hexagon in Saturn. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got deep into that, and then Saturday. Was, yeah, and then all the meanings of all that, and just a lot of theology I got into, and then I was like, well, this is right up my alley because uh, as a lyricist, this like wordplay is you know very important, and just kind of understanding how a lot of the words work, mm -hmm. and I went down deep with um, the. Uh, 
maritime law. I got into that mm-hmm. about um, how a lot of the words are used, like in banking mm. and uh, mortgage. Yeah, it's all pledge. water-based. Everything is based oh. around water. Okay. Banks, currency. Mm. It's all, every term is like a water term. And, and then, then you start realizing like, okay, well, the bank is just the front and it's just really water. Water is really the currency, fresh water. And uh, yeah, that took me down quite a few rabbit holes. That was, um, was there something like in pop culture or like a, a movie or a piece of art you saw that kind of shifted your mind towards that? Because for me, it was, I saw They Live, and then I was like, okay, oh, yeah. this is not work going so I have a pair of those glasses, and they actually do that thing. It's really weird. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Obey. Yeah. It, just says, what, it just says probably there's a price tag on it. Or uh, something. I, like, I went to art school, so it became very apparent to me what, how art was being used to uh, kind of manipulate consciousness. Yes. And just how our consciousness is... like. We all agree on whether maritime law, if that's the origin of it, I can understand. Like you could go, probably go back to the Templar Knights and even the Phoenicians uh, before that, um, and how they had a whole network going on that you don't learn about in schools too much. Um, anyway, I I won't go down that rabbit hole. But <laughs> yeah, getting getting back to to like kind of the. I don't know the moment of where it came from. Thanks, bro. No problem. And, um, it's French wine. It's lovely. It's yeah. very tasty. Yeah, Bordeaux. What kind is it? Uh, is it Cab- Cabernet? It's a Merlot. Like, or Chateau. Yeah. Hmm. I've never oh, gone back. I can't even France that. I only do it's South France or Northern Italy. That's, that's the only. Well, that's the only one I'll buy. <laughs> the only one. If it. somebody offered me other sure, wine, yeah. no problem. <laughs> but South out American. of my own pocket, yeah. 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 <laughs> South American wines are pretty good too. Yeah, I've had a, f- a few of those. If you look in the corner there, we've got our uh, yeah. collection oh, here. The soldiers. That's each guest, yeah. yeah. Australia, yeah. France. Oh, I don't know. That looks like Italy. I think that's Italy. Italian. Tuscany. Yeah, oh, we Tuscany. keep it. Keep it pretty Italian with the wine. That's interesting. Uh, Tuscany is where um, a friend of ours, who Filippo, who um, mixes some of our music. Oh, amazing. We we were in a band together. Tara and I were in a band together in Los Angeles, started by Ken Andrews from a band called Failure. Cool. And it was one of my, uh, you know, when you're a kid listening to music and it becomes very inspirational you're saying like was there a song was there a piece of art was there any of that that's what I was gonna get to is like the sound came from a fusion of a bunch of bands and um, Tara and I have an incredible crossover of that but um, but also a lot of stuff like the other doesn't really listen to yeah 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 We're very much like a Vesica Vesica Pisces kind of uh, thank you that's great yeah um, kind of crossover and that's what Fifth Project is but um, the he Ken, we approached Ken and to mix our, our first album, Circadian, and he said, um, yeah, sure, send down the stuff. We got to talk and we went down to LA. It was like a big, very big moment for us. I think it was the first time our bass player, Peter, had, had left Canada. And um, we, um, you know, left our stuff with him and went through the whole mixing process, which was like a, a big first for us. Like we never, yeah. yeah. In LA? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It felt really big time. It was yeah. like, it was kind of funny. But um, when you just realize it's just like, everybody's just making music and trying to make things sound better. And it's just like, it doesn't matter where they are in the, in the world, but it's just like meeting somebody who's, uh, was a big deal to you at, at that age is kind of, kind of cool. Yeah. And then, so... That was Circadian, our first album, and that was like a kind of like Tara wrote half of it, I wrote half of it, and we crossed over and, and we colored each other's songs. Amazing. And we realized we had a lot in common, which ties into the, the stuff we've been talking about, the esoteric side, the occulted information, that kind of stuff. And um, Ken got in, got in touch with us again. He said, I'm doing this project called Los Angeles Digital. No, sorry, man. I'm, no, no, I'm no, talking talk, and I can't do No, the, no, you, you go. You go. I'll I jump it. I'll jump it. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a single focus kind of kind of guy. But, um, no, no. So Ken asked us to be in this uh, digital project he started, Digital Noise Academy, LADNA. And so 
there's a bunch of people involved in that. There was um, Ken and his wife, Charlotte, and um, Charlotte Martin, and um, Jordan Zadarozny of Blinker the Star, who's like a Canadian 90s uh, grunge kid. He's an icon. Yeah. And um, there was Filippo Gaetani from Italy, and, uh, you know, a bunch of other people I could go on. There was, a, there was like dozens of people. There's people from, you know, uh, Beck's backing band, wow. Nine Inch Nails, uh, Holy moly. Uh, Brad, yeah, I am said I wasn't going to go on. I'm still going on. Anyway, uh, I'm not trying to name drop. I was just like, it was like no, such dude. a fun experience, no, you know, when you're that, it's like, how did we get here? Yeah. I mean, I know how she got here. Her voice is amazing, but I think I was just like, you know, it's like Scott goes along with her. So I'm just like, okay. the, I'm <laughs> yeah. the, the dog that falls along going, this is fun. And uh, anyway, we, we played in a band and we ended up going down there and recording in a studio called Bomb Shelter. Um, which is Eric Kretz, the drummer from Stone Temple Pilots, who's a oh, big inspiration wow, too. Holy shit. Yeah. And um, so anyway, that didn't really, that was like so many cooks in the kitchen. As I was saying, there's a lot of people involved. Yeah. And um, it was kind of more an experience about learning how to, like we learned how to record. We were in a studio, we got treated like rock stars, the one and only time in our life where it was like catered <laughs> and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Terrifying. Was, Absolutely terrifying. Well, it's, it is yeah. actually because it's like, it's, then there's that pressure to get it done in that yeah. time frame, right? That's what we learned about and, the way uh, that they, they worked. It was all very business minded, and yeah. we're very right brained. Like Creative. me too. Yeah. If I had a label waiting for me, they'd be waiting and waiting and waiting. And oh waiting. yeah. Oh, I'm bad. <laughs> it's long. It takes a long time. It's spurts though. I can do like a whole chunk of it in a few days. Mm-hmm few sessions but then it'd be like a year after that it's where yeah. i still haven't finished these things you know i think scott yeah. and i work in a little bit of a different way i'm very much like the inspiration takes me and here's six songs in six days yeah and you're more like i show up every day and i work and i'm just like i can show up every day and work but i know it's not going to happen unless like well that's I've collected the information first there's two great uh you know components from each of those ways of doing it because i kind of do both ways as well mm-hmm. And I, have all my free time is, is spent on the music. So I'm like, every day is like a five hour schedule. So I'm like, I email for an hour, I read for an hour, I um, exercise for an hour, I uh, edit for an hour, and then I do like music for an hour every day. And all that music I'm writing, I might not ever use. And most of it I might not ever use, but it's just like the exercise of yeah. doing it. And then it's like when the idea does strike, it's like that the shit flows pretty easy. Like you yeah. capture it pretty quick and it's almost flawless, right? Because yeah. uh, before uh, I'd find if I'd wait to do stuff a lot of the time, I'd be, I'd be at a roadblock. I'd be just like, ah, get discouraged at this part and then kind of lose momentum. Um, but I find that it's like if I just kind of do it every day as, as like a, a job almost, mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot easier to capture uh, um, all you can when the moment strikes, right? Yeah. Um, I think like our job, our job here is to hone our skills so yes. that when that channeled message comes through, we are practiced enough to like honor it and bring it forth basically. Um, but there's so many aspects of music like writing is one thing but then like making sure that you're playing your instruments well that you're practicing your songs and all that kind of thing so i don't write every day and i don't try to write every day but um usually at least pick up a guitar or something something yeah if it's you're contributing something to it then it's a lot easier when uh the moment strikes you Mm -hmm. you're like okay this is a good one (laughs) grab it get it um so you guys have been in off season mode, I like to call it. <laughs> um, so you're uh, recording, done recording. Are you, are you in the process of recording still? Or? We're s- okay. We're working on two EPs right now that are coming out one after the other. So the okay. one that we're like what five seconds away from being done recording. We're at the finish line. We're at the nice. finish line for one, mm-hmm. and we're about maybe halfway through for the next one. Uh, Maybe. I'd say three quarters. What's There's a very volume of, uh, of it done. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll be getting into the, I guess, mixing and mastering stage with that. And then there's all the artwork and 
that kind of stuff coming up, which is like a huge and that's a different part. Music yeah. videos and all that kind of stuff. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing, oh, sorry, that's what the other thing I want to ask you guys is like I looked at a lot of your videos and I noticed it's like a lot of good, nice locations. So do you go on your trips and do you have like intentions of shooting a video or you get to your trips and it's like, hey, we're here, let's shoot a video. I don't think is we've it? ever shot a video. No? Uh, or no, maybe I'm just thinking it's like in nature. I've seen you get like, yeah. it's, or In nature? Of... That's just usually High Park or somewhere. Oh, really? Like, um, yeah, Fergus. Yeah. Oh, Fergus was a place. Arthur. Yeah, our like from our, our last <laughs> album or our last EP, The Wolf, which came out last year, um, the music video for Vagabond is um, in Fergus. And it's maybe I'm confusing that with a lot of your trip. You guys have a lot of content, so we do. Yeah, yeah there's so, um, there's some stuff. If you're talking about the temples and things like that, that's what I'm probably. Um, some yeah. of it was shot when we were in Mexico. Um, we were actually. Uh, one of our trips was to be, you know, do you remember 2012, December 21st, yeah, yeah. 2012? that's when my World. first album came out. Nice. Oh, right yeah, I dropped it. No, okay. sorry, 2011, and then it, I officially, 2012 in January. Cool. Yeah, so December 2012. Yeah, yeah, that's right when... Yeah, waiting. Yeah, every, everybody in the West was... Or, no, I shouldn't say everybody in the West. That's such a, 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 a like, a broad brush. But yeah. anyway, um, there, was, there was this ridiculous fever in Western media, in the majority of like mainstream Western media, that the world was going to end because the Mayan calendar was going to end. Yeah. And there are people in the Flashback. world... Flashback. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there are people in the world right now who are kind of like, ancient civilizations has become kind of mainstream thanks to Graham Hancock and some other people like yeah. Randall Carlson and, uh, yeah. you know, on Joe Rogan's podcast and all that kind of stuff. But um, when I was a kid, it was my... Uh, my high school ancient civilizations teacher that got me into that stuff. You got a class like that? Yeah, Blair Hiltz was my my Holy teacher. Shit. We became friends and we're friends to this day. So shit. I would have actually been an interesting <laughs> high school if there was something like that. Dude, yeah, I I was blessed with teachers wow. my whole life. I had great teachers, and I was like they taught me how to think for myself, how yeah. to critically think for myself. Yeah, that's, that's not. Important. I don't think that's taught very. No, because it's usually out of a textbook, and it's just like. Conform. Answers Conform. in the back of the yeah. book. Yeah. yeah, it's more like a yeah. think um, hive mind mentality right now. Yeah. We're kind of living in the precursor of 1984, or Raven World, or uh, We, which is our first or song the, in the coma. Was or the, the 50s, I'd say we're living in. Like, oh, again, yeah. almost yeah. like uh, Cyclically. stepping on eggshells. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. amazing. I've got, I've got a 50s haircut right now. No, but the December 21st, <laughs> thing, were you going to expand on that? I was, yeah. And so there were people. Um, who kind of knew that all that was a bit of like media hype. Hogwash, yeah. Yeah, and so, but for whatever reason, when I was 12 years old, I was very much into this. I wrote on a sticky note, I'm 21st to 23rd of December, 2012, I need to be in Takao mm. for the, the Bactune celebration, the 13th Bactune celebration. Takao and, and the pyramids in uh, Guatemala? Was it Mexico? Guatemala. Guatemala. Oh, yeah, so if you're familiar, if you're a Star Wars fan out there of the original stuff, not so much like... I'm going to see Return of the Jedi right now. Like the original Return yeah. of the Jedi? Yes, without uh, all the additional... Yeah, with my mom flavor. actually. So we have to finish at uh, 5.40. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. We can do that. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. Me and my mom are going to watch it at, at the Fox Theater. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, right on. Yeah. That's a cool place. That's like an old school... It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a retro theater. Shout out to the Fox Theater. Right on. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> in, in Star Wars, the the rebel base has these pyramids, and yes. that's Cal in Guatemala. Is that the one where the Ewoks attack? Is that Return? That's of the Return Jedi? of the Jedi, which you're going to see. But I'm talking. No, about... that was in Empire Strikes Back. I think. Uh, yeah, the beginning. Ewoks. Were the Ewoks? The Ewoks are from the third one. No, the Ewoks at the beginning of Return of my bad. Yeah, you're right. Oh, okay. Return of the Jedi. I don't We're getting lost. It doesn't matter. My point is that it's like these are the pyramids I, are there. What so you probably to be there. got me into this was gotcha. Star Wars. Yeah. I saw yeah, these yeah. things and I was like, George Lucas filmed it where? And I'm like, those things are real. They're not like a paint, a painting. Like, yeah. you know, you see Blade Runner when you're a kid and you're like, where's this city? And it's like, that's not a real city. No, they made it. Up. It's like, oh, what are movies again? <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, it was like a step down from the news and, and politics. But the, um, the whole 
pyramid structure and stuff got me interested in that in that culture my ancient civilizations teacher in high school got me interested in that and I just mm-hmm. this was a goal it's like you know this the secret is you write things down and you visualize it and you feel it yeah and, and you move towards that consciously yeah and you know that's like the mainstream kind of kind of funny like bestseller short, you know back of the book kind of uh, short forming of it but like what got us to um, December 21st was that idea of putting it down on a on a post-it note and then we're sitting there oh. for the first sunrise and that's in the video this was a really long oh, conversation that's cool. I, I'm done with no the no it's <laughs> all good don't worry about it that's the point of the con- the, yeah, yeah. The, the weed's the secret ingredient to go for a long content yeah <laughs> I usually use it medicinally so I don't like I do microdosing, not macrodosing, but ah. yeah, but uh, that's for health reasons. But um, we were there for the December twenty first to twenty third celebration in Tikal, and um, we stayed there, and it was an experience. It was a life changing experience, and the world didn't end. I'm, I, but I figured like, hey, you know what? If these people are like picking up on something that's real, I want to be sitting on the pyramid yeah. at the dawn yeah. when the when the meteors are coming in and we're yeah. all gonna die. That'd be it's awesome. Like, I just be like, yeah. might as well have a good view. Exactly. And so uh, yeah, but it was really just. Be- you did see something. I did actually. There was a. You know what? On the December twenty third. Yeah. We're out there at four in the morning, and I'm used to doing that because I'm uh, I have Buddhist tendencies in my in my yeah. history. Yeah. Um, and uh, so he was the only one really awake. Is part yeah. of the, like everyone else was kind of like it's four a.m. Yeah. But he's like it's four a.m. <laughs> yeah, going to yeah. Do we're thing. hiking the through the jungle at yeah. night. There's you know there's jaguars stalking us Holy for geez. sure. Just like looking at us going like mm, that's a lot of food yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> and is it worth it? Is it worth a tag? Like you know, is it worth the tag? There's a lot of them. Like it's worth my energy. energy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and um, you could hear the. The howler monkeys who sound like dinosaurs. If you haven't heard them, you should go on YouTube and listen to it. It's crazy. That's amazing. So crazy. All right. Scary dinosaurs. Yeah. And so we climb up the pyramid. We're sitting there. It's pitch black. And I'm like, oh my God, here I am. I'm sitting on the, the pyramid from Star Wars. Like, yeah. I'm a bit, I used to be a, bit, a big fan, you know, when I was younger. You, oh, yeah. you kind of like let that stuff influence you maybe a little too much. But, um, it was so awesome to be sitting there and being like, this is cool. There were people who built this thing who were really like, we don't even know what they were doing. Their understanding of the cosmology is insane. The calendar system yeah. that they, uh, they inherited from the Olmec culture. Um, Nothing's uh, been copied like this. It's just, no. it's insane. And I just, I have so much appreciation for their observation of the cosmos and what it's lent to our understanding of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm sitting there Everybody else around me, I guess, is asleep. I didn't know this. I figure everyone else is bright eyed. Okay, at 4 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, the jungle becomes illuminated, and I'm like, whoa. oh, cool, the sun. It's like, but the sun's supposed to be there, and it's coming from over here. It's and I'm moving. like, whoa, there's a fireball. I shit thee not. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to swear. <laughs> anyway, it comes flying <laughs> across the square. Well, we're playing at your, your festival. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah. It's a community focused festival, so I wasn't. You no, know, no, no, this is be different. A, okay. <laughs> And so it comes flying across the air. And I'm like, oh, shit. For a second there, I'm like, this is it's the crazy. end. I'm Here like, it is. I got the view. Yeah. Everybody's asleep and I got the best view. I didn't know they were asleep. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm literally like, like, what the actual F is going on? Fireball coming across like, and it's not coming at me, but I'm like, if this hits, is it like a nuclear bomb? Like, yeah. I don't, I've never seen a yeah. comet strike before. And an asteroid strike or whatever it was. And so... I'm like, dude, and I'm turning around. Everybody's asleep. No like, worries. her brother was there with us. Uh, yeah, it was like, and... I didn't, I didn't see it. Ashley was there. Ashley yeah, was there. His wife, and everybody's asleep, and I'm just like, what the fuck? I think I just looked away for a second, <laughs> blinked, and then you're like, didn't you see that? I'm like, what? <laughs> see what? <laughs> so this thing is like... <laughs> and I'm like, all right, dude. If this is a huge kaboom, this is fucking rad. I'm oh, sorry, this is rad. This is Buckle like... Up. Yeah. <laughs> and it hit, and there was like a... Boom. No like, way. But it wasn't catastrophic. It yeah, wasn't yeah. Hollywood. It wasn't like what you'd expect in, in those in those, you know, Armageddon style films. It was a pretty big like it looked like it took out some. It must have been minuscule too. To it was even, very even small. To when make, I, like, I, yeah. Yeah, I I was totally burnt up. Like It might have been something that was just like a fragment of it of uh, the last it was a bit. great show and nothing wow. happened and then and then we waited and like you know an hour an hour and a half waited the sun yeah 
And that's what we recorded was the sunrise. This is a very long oh, story. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, that's great. I love it. This is good. This Your is podcast awesome. is now called This is a Very Long Story. But <laughs> also, also I have the to longest, s- definitely. <laughs> I've never been to Southeast Asia. So, and as yes. far as I know, Tara hasn't either. No. Unless she's a secret agent. But um, I had a chance. I, yeah. The, when did when did you go? The no, I haven't been yet. But oh. the houseman at oh, Thailand, Thailand, and uh, he went in uh, April. He said, "Come to my uh, parents' place," and I was like, oh, "I'm so broke. Oh, that's <laughs> like, be next I would time. so want to go." Yes, yeah. and uh, it says like 47 there now. In April, it's like 47, 48. Celsius. Yeah. 20 degrees. Yeah. That's and I was like, is that like Texas temperatures? Yeah. And I was like, I don't adjust well like that. No, <laughs> it's I mean, like, it takes, it takes, I need like a week or two to like ease into that. Yeah. Yeah. No, not a long story. Don't worry about that. Yeah, that was, okay. uh, what I was going to say is, uh, I, my, I had a similar story of the uh, Y2K thing. Uh, when that whole hype was going on, people were saying like, your toaster's going to eat you and, all that type of stuff. And your toast is going to eat you? Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, like maximum overdrive. Toaster. Yeah, yeah toaster. 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 No, they're just saying that anything with a computer chip is just going to go haywire. Yes. And, uh, so I was at a uh, uh, New Year's Eve party and uh, we're all like 20 years old. And uh, I'm like, I got up first and I turned on the TV and I'm like, well, Australia is all right. So <laughs> we're okay. <Exactly. laughs> yeah. Like, we're here. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, okay. Nothing yeah, happened. The planes didn't fall out. Of, like all this didn't happen, you know. Yeah. And then uh, I don't know. My take on twenty twelve is like um, uh, it wasn't necessarily like the end of what we know in a physical form. It was a mental shift. A I consciousness. Think it was a mental shift of consciousness. Yeah, I would agree. Whatever the previous consciousness was died, and then the new era of consciousness stepped in. They were tracking some born. interesting stuff. Yeah. I think 2012, that's when it was like a death and a birth. It was like that conjunction part. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's what they were trying to translate in the Mayan calendar. And like anything, it's just misinterpreted. And it's also like, I think with anything else, it's just like not only misinterpreted, but just like overblown. How can I make a buck off this? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's like doomsday shit, right? Yeah. It's it's and, been uh, selling for a few thousand years, man. There's like a lot of people who get together and read books. That there's are, a whole lot of it, money on all oh, that type of shit. Yeah, well, yeah. it's weird because it's called the apocalypse, but I think what they're trying to tell, like fire and brimstone, is actually Armageddon. Mm-hmm. Apocalypse is a grand revelation. Yes. So if you have the book of Revelation, it's not about the end of the world. It's about it's a rebirth. It's a re a higher re- level cycle. Of, of understanding yeah. things. The seven seven seals are your seven chakras, and like you can just—that's more of the you know Eastern mentality kind of thing. But the Western mentality is seven seals, so it's like it's interesting to think of how that book is astrotheological and and spiritual, and there's also a bunch of stuff in there that gets kind of crazy that goes back to you know John Dee and Francis Bacon mm-hmm. and like how they made the first King James. I'm going off again. Something no, random. no, it's I'm I'm, go, I'm right behind you here. I'm just yeah. kind of sidestepping, but uh, I really kind of um, started delving into um, that type of subject matter uh, when I heard the Randall Carlson um, podcast with Graham Hancock, Joe oh, Rogan. Yeah, like yeah, one like the one of the first ones they did. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then the way he was explaining it, how like everything that's been written about the history of the pyramids is like completely fabricated. Not fabricated, but it's just like, it's a different story. It's like a narrative. It is. And then the one thing that really set out for me was like the idea that we've, okay, we, okay, we come from primates and it's like this only gradual uh, up climb for intelligence until the point we're at now. But what they were trying to say is that there was intelligence before and it's gone away and it came back and it went away and it came back and it was almost like he said he explained it uh, in a way like uh, you gain all this knowledge and then you lose your memory Mm -hmm. and then you have to regain it again and explained like that you're born and you and then you die exactly yeah yeah. and uh, that made a lot of sense Uh, Uh so that sent me down a few uh, interesting rabbit holes with that and I went all like 
full out conspiracy theory on like everything. Like I went, I I went looked into everything, and I also <laughs> kind of just like voiced my opinion on a lot of certain things. Is the then, world flat? Oh, no, that's place. where I'm getting to the, this is the end point. So I was, I go to Dominican a lot. I used to spend a lot of time in uh, uh, um, Puerto Plata. So I was there for like a month one time. And you just get talking to people at the bar and you end up meeting some interesting characters. So I met a guy who happened to live in the same building as me. And he also went to the same high school as me. So I'm like, that's just an interesting coincidence. So I said, I have a podcast. Do you want to do uh, an episode? And he was like a dead on flat earther. He was like dead set. And then, so I was like, eh. <laughs> I was like, how about we have a podcast just to like politely disagree? You know what I mean? Okay. And then, so we had this title called Agree to Disagree. So he was like, why don't you do my podcast? And I was like, okay. And I looked at his podcast and it had like 300,000. <laughs> subscribers oh, and wow. I was like okay I'll do yours <laughs> <laughs> so I sat there and we went down like every fucking big rabbit hole like 9-11 all this shit okay. everything right I didn't Most say I didn't say like... anything that was like <laughs> this is like what I think I was like this is just my perspective yeah. and like 9-11 for example I was just like I'm just seeing it through the eyes of like a professional camera operator I'm like this is what I'm seeing and then we were just talking and it got to the point of like flat earth and I was just like I don't I don't want to dive into that <laughs> and I could see his comments were like on fire do it do and it they're like, go there we'll get him <laughs> and they're like we'll convert him we'll, we'll finally get him we'll talk we'll talk him into it you know <laughs> and then what I realized is like he was making so much dough whipping that shit up yeah. like he had a good voice so he was doing VO stuff with a bunch of B-roll and he was just like selling that like hotcakes cool. and I was like make oh. some money I was like okay yeah now I know and this is uh, I finally got a bird's eye view of how I was going through shit and I was like oh I've been the perfect um, candidate for manipulation uh, wow. on the platforms that I've been you know consumed on like Facebook and yeah. CIA book all that shit exactly so I went deep into it and then uh, also uh, Facebook used to have these uh, other entity uh, groups that had um, one was called cop block and it was like uh, filmed uh, police killing you know innocent people like snuff films yeah, uh, no, it was just like people with their cell phones and it was just like accountability. It was like an, an accountability site that was like going after, um, you know, police that got away with stuff and, and it was oh. just like, here's a, a record of Did stuff. Did you say cop block? Cop block. Oh my God, you know what I heard? Cock, cock block? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to say where you're going with that. I was like, just, what so, the? So, so. That's I need almost, to wear more earplugs. a lot of, web, ear plugs a lot of websites or... now. That's pretty much all. That's Facebook now in a nutshell. Cock block, really. <laughs> um, so this it had all these sites that had accountability for all these, um, you know, uh, police that got away with shit and a whole bunch of shit, right? And uh, my, uh, I had a music video that featured uh, the G20. And I captured all that stuff down there. And in 2007? Uh, 2010? Maybe that was right. Yeah, yeah sorry. My bad. My bad. Uh, no worries. And uh, so I, it, my video got featured on it and it got a lot of views. But anyways, there was like these entities that had, you know, uh, power and like were gaining momentum. Mm -hmm. And uh, 2016 happened and they all disappeared. Facebook made them all just wipe them out. Mm -hmm. Like... Uh, probably just erased all the uh, footage on the servers and and then uh, so you got you got censored yeah right 2016 away. 2016 and then was the, that when they were rolling that out with all those other people or were there yes. certain people they're like yeah but they're so far crazy that it's good to censor them yeah and then they kept walking in yeah well that's when I knew that tiptoe. that was a different uh, change over handle or censorship and mind control with because uh, then Facebook was the one that was um, sponsoring like the debates 
In a what way. debates are you talking about? Like the presidential debates uh, oh. for 2016. And I'm like, huh, interesting. Huh. And I'm like, and I noticed all these patterns of like how people were manipulated through like what you watch on social media. And like, and that's what I was figuring out myself, watching myself. Well, uh, and like going down these holes with like videos on YouTube. And it's like, oh, this is what they're recommending because they want to keep me in this, uh, you know. Um, attention process. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you're if you're consuming, you're maybe not thinking so much, right? And Absolutely. and what you're consuming, if it makes you if it makes you believe in a, a Phoenician a Phoenician folk tale to make people stay out of out of um, you know the the Great Lakes mining that's like a hundred hundred thousand years old. You know, the is it bronze? I want to say anyway. You know. They bring it back around. They bring these stories back around because it's in our consciousness. It's in our collective consciousness. It's pretty interesting. Well, that's what television is in a nutshell. Television is like a device that uses hypnosis to keep you like in a a very low state of hypnosis where you don't, you're not even aware of it. Mm -hmm. And then advertising is just these like loud versions. Triggers. Well, there's these triggers to just consume. Yeah. And we're all, I think, at the tail end of social media, like, that's where we're at, almost. It's just programming, that's why we call it that. It's it's literally programming, yeah, it is hypnotic. Do you guys know about uh, um, McGill and all that? The MK Ultra? MK Ultra, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I tried to, I I worked for, um, I worked for CBC once upon a time, and I um, tried to uh, bring attention to that. And they wouldn't, they, they kind of gave me the conspiracy theorist kind of, and I'm like, dude, I am so not a conspiracy theorist. You need to look at the the people involved in, in McGill University, uh, Dr. Cameron, I believe his name is. And Cameron. Yeah. And, and what he did to people and, and why they settled out of court. So this, so that that if they settled in court, all this information would have been on the record and easy for people to find. Yeah. But and CBC was like, yeah, no, mm-mm, no, no, no. Mm. And uh, then on the, you know, as soon as it became declassified, CBC ran a, you know, back in the day, there was this program and, then the, and it was called MK Ultra. And it when did you in, say, when were you there saying that to them? Uh, before it became mainstream information, I guess. Yeah. So I, I started there like mid 2000s, maybe. And so it was like okay. my first day actually. So yeah. I think it was maybe two thousand and four. Yeah. Oh, so well. Yeah. My f- my first day was, um, they caught Saddam Hussein, and and I, oh, and I was so like, that's, that's not like, Saddam Hussein. Yeah. That's one of his body doubles. And the only reason I know that is because I'd done a, um, a an illustration that was on the cover of an American political magazine prior to that, mm. and it had to ha- feature George W. Bush and Saddam Hussein. And um, so I was given all this intel from the art director, and it was basically like he has 17 or 18, I can't remember because it's been so long, but it's like 17 or 18 body doubles. Yeah. And this is the real guy, according to uh, our government intel information, and here are the body doubles. And you can wow. tell that the guy that they caught wasn't the real guy because the bridge of the nose was different. And I was arguing this on my first day, and of course I got overruled because I'm just this junior kid who's like, I wasn't even, I wasn't a junior, I was a senior designer, but at the same time it was my, I was like rookie in the, the so total. Did you work in news? What, what yes, job? I did. Yeah. What did you do? Everything. Like it was in, in like the graphics department. Okay. I, I was like, a news shooter. That was my very first job. Yeah, we talked a bit about yeah. this when I first met you. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. that was right around the time. Like, I was actually like a month after 9 11, so I was actually volunteering doing shows. And nine uh, eleven happened, and then I was like hired a month later, and then every story was like anthrax. Mm. It was like oh, always bomb scares. I went to all these places, and I was just like, "Holy fear!" <laughs> I was like, "Holy fear driven," and I was like, and then I saw the other side of it. It was like, "Holy money," like big time contracts, yeah, and like and centralization of big control, th- and that's when the it started changing for the militarization of the police and that changed. Yeah. And then, um, the thing that really made me as an artist, cause I was looking and I was trying, like, I was like, I'm just rapping. I don't know what I'm kind of going in a certain direction, 
So I went to the G20 with a senior uh, camera operator, and he just like showed me how to conduct yourself in an environment like that. Yeah. He's just like neutral. Exactly. He just shoots. He's yeah. friendly to everybody. He doesn't say anything. He actually had like a, a peace sign on his shirt. He was just like, doesn't engage, doesn't, he just got his footage, got the hell out, and just like, and so I learned from that. And I got home and I wrote about the whole G20, that was my first song. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like spearheaded towards like, I was going to report almost a way, as a way of an art form, through music and through rap. Uh, and then they got kind of just led me through all those type of subject matters like that. And... Uh, I'm very in tune with numbers too. And I feel like numbers, uh, patterns are like when they, uh, you, you're aware of them. They're almost like reminders that you're on a, the right path of like what you're. So oh yeah. I was going to say on, on that. The, no. no, I was going to say on the way here, you know, like I, I'm not a huge, crazy fan of, uh, Riding on the bus, like there's a lot of people, there's a oh, lot it's of a, always senses a, and smells and all the kinds of things. But anyway, I get off, I'm feeling a little nauseous. TTC is, a, is a, uh, an adventure on its own. The first thing I saw was a license plate that said 369. And so I was like, I okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, 369. Okay, I feel better. Just stuff like that. You know, you see like repeating numbers or, yeah, any multiple of three to six or nine. Um, it just makes me feel good and I see them all the time like it doesn't even matter it'll be like one one two 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 or something like that like if I'm looking at a clock and it has all the numbers angel numbers angel numbers have you looked those up no I've been told about them no. yeah I mean yeah. like they don't really mean like it's not that they don't mean anything but everyone has the, yeah. if you look at it online everyone has their own version of what it means and yeah. what does it come down to every single time it's like your angels are looking for, out for you and you're on the right track Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Vegas. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how much does that like that theme play into your writing, and also you do uh, you're doing a uh, solo project as well? Um, like numbers so, or esoteric so. stuff? Yeah, both. It's all the kind of yeah. the same thing. Right? Same. Yeah. Um, yeah, heavily. I I think you mentioned before about like anything in pop culture and movies or things like that, and I feel like. I don't know if it was the movies of the 80s or if it was just us watching it, but they were yeah. so esoteric. It was the movies, dude. They are oh, so, yeah. and they're oh, not anymore. Bro, don't get me started with the, the three uh, diehards. <laughs> oh, no, we're talking like the, I don't even know about the esoteric stuff. We're going to have to have a conversation oh, yeah. about that, but yeah. she's talking, talking about, about like the labyrinth, or it's oh. just called Labyrinth, isn't it? Yeah, Labyrinth. Um, David Bowie. Yeah. 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 Um, Dark yeah. Crystal. Dark Crystal. Dark Crystal. A Never Ending classic. Story, which all is, I think, all like, my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Even, Ours too. Ours too. Even yeah. things like, I don't know if anyone's seen it, but it's like Cloak and Dagger. Yeah. They were always about like kids who know the truth and they've got to fight the adults who are trying to keep them down and trying to like take power and control from them. And, and they were, yeah, the heroes of the story, basically. And always about the underdog. Um, yeah, my solo album is very much about the underdog and it's very much about esotericism in that I'm taking characters, like pegging characters really, like mm -hmm. Pan and, um, I don't know, just bringing the, the qualities forward that are kind of put down or misunderstood basically. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like the nurturing, mothery character in my solo stuff, but I like to be more like deep with our collective projects but yes Scott's shirt with the labyrinth this is like uh, the artwork for our, our album actually um, which is based on those three movies and the, the esoteric labyrinth. themes that are in in them yeah uh, the album is called the labyrinth yeah, yeah. I, those are movies I always watched yeah so I think up, it just yeah. like runs in our veins and can't even really help it um, I also I don't know I think I feel like it's something every '80s kid had in their house, or some their friend did. Was those like Time Life books that were about oh, the yeah. occult? Yeah. So the black books, and they have the silver writing on them, and they're like palmistry and seances, hardcover. and yeah, yeah, beautiful hardcover books. I have a few of them still, but uh, I don't know. Just like always being exposed to that kind of thing, and I think just having a natural connection. If you're an artist, if you're a musician, you have like this natural connection with nature anyway, and so you kind of just know stuff don't you 
Yeah, you can talk to trees. Well, nature, talk nature trees. tells you, I think. It's, yeah. uh, that's what I figured it out when I uh, got to go to Northern Italy. And I was like, I had maybe two songs written. And then I had a couple instrumentals, and I would, and then I got there, and it was just like, oh, all right, that's okay. Now I suppose I'm, I understand that connection now. So now all that other stuff is easy to just like share and write down. Italy is a very high vibe place. Yes. Um, it was way in the mountains. Like, yeah, especially ooh, way in the mountains. Close to the Dolomites. The Alps? Yeah, close to the Dolomites. So if you know where Verona is, mm -hmm. north of there, so um, halfway between Innsbruck and Verona, there's a town called Trento, and it's like, you take a bus, and it's like an hour uh, west into the mountains. Nice. Through, oh, it's... Does that mean 30? So beautiful. Yeah, I was wondering. <laughs> Sorry? Trento? Is that 30? 30? Sorry? Yeah, Trento. Is that, what does that mean? Is that the number? Oh, 30? it's just a town. No, it's oh, okay. Trent, uh, Trento. Oh, okay. And then um, take a, it's like a town that's about 500 people. It's in the mountains. And all the houses are like built in the mountain. Is that where your family's from? Uh, my great-grandfather is from there. Um, and he moved from there and started like this uh, knife grinding type of business. And then... AM grinding. Yeah. All these guys came from the same town. Called Pinzolo, which is just north of there, and it's just like uh, the tip of the Alps, mm -hmm. uh, like the most southern part. It's like where all these waterfalls are, and, mm -hmm. and kind of wow. all this fresh water comes from. And so, uh, my grandfather was there quite a bit, and then my dad started going there like 20 years ago, a couple times a year with his cousin, and. Uh, so I went on my own in 2010, and this was like a dream. I couldn't stop dreaming about this. It was like I had to go. So I went there, and there's a lady who is a cousin of my grandfather's, and she's like 90 years old, and she came to Canada and lived with them for a while, worked with them, and then came back to Italy. So she became like the, the connection yeah. between Canada and so I went there and I got to spend time with her and it was just like a grandson, grandmother type of relationship. Cool. So it was just like go to lunch, you know, hang out, just do nothing, chill out. So one morning she wakes me up and uh, it's like I was in a dream and it's so dark and like these houses are like 900 years old so it's like when you close the windows it's like pitch dark mm -hmm. so I never dreamed like this in a long time it's like it's a good deep, for your oh it yeah. reset everything like I all my chakras were reset wow. and I went into like good REM sleep for was a week straight right yeah. so I think that's part of what triggered the writing and all that stuff mm -hmm. anyway she woke me up and she's like yeah she didn't say anything so we went to this place and we went and saw this statue, which is my logo here. I'll show you. This is the, oh, sorry. This logo, I kind of see the outline of it. Yeah. So that's this statue in um, Italy. And uh, it um, represents the grinders that are there. So that's where my grandfather, great grandfather got that profession. And I saw it and I was like, oh, okay. That's what it is. Like blue collar worker, mm -hmm. just kind of like doing rap as it's supposed to be, you know, like just honest, honesty, hard work, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, like, that's what it is. So it's like there's the identity kind of, and everything just came easy after that. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. But yeah, I got, I was very fortunate to go uh, many times, and uh, it was very, uh, beneficial to me and I got to go six times and then the lockdown happened mm -hmm. so I've been like seven years so but how old would you go kind of regularly uh, I went every summer in my 30s I was wow. yeah oh you have been there oh almost it was like six out of six out of ten years but yeah I was like I don't need to pay for my taxes this year I'm just gonna go 
to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this shit. <laughs> so, oh well. You gotta. You're only young once, right? Like it's like I always say, if you have some money and you have, if you're young, you should get out there. And uh, you guys did some quite a bit of traveling too. I was in Italy when I was 22. Oh, nice. Did the European backpacking thing, but Italy was where I ran out of money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the second time, but this time I had to get a job. <laughs> so I worked there for, in a, well, it was a campground kind of resort with cabins and you could tent there and things like that. Yeah. Um, and that's where I ran out of money. So I just asked, they, the staff there looked completely like harried and too busy. So I asked if they were hiring and they were. So I just worked there for a few weeks. Um, oh, really? Made just like no money, but um, <laughs> yeah, I learned how to make cappuccinos there, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. So I just worked in the coffee shop, and yeah, basically made enough money to like go on to Amsterdam and go home. So where in Italy did you? It was just about happen? Rome. I don't remember okay. what the place South, was called, east, but it was west, like hills. Uh, north. North. Okay. I've been uh, west of Rome to Ostia. It's like the coast. Oh, nice. Does that mean bone? I don't know. It mm-hmm. might mean coast. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Ostia. But I think Ostia? it's the town Ostia. of uh, Mar- uh, Marconi. Marconi. Oh, the, the, the original telephone yeah. dude. The, before oh. Bell took the... <laughs> I think t- he took Tesla's idea and, turned, yeah. and created a radio. And yeah. then he got credit for it. And then eventually they're like, it was Tesla's idea. Was yeah. And so they gave it to Tesla. And stole it all over the yeah. place. But there's like a, a monument for like a Morse code there. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Marco. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's I. I was near Rome there, uh, cool. but I haven't been north. I just imagine it's nice. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. It was really, really hot though. Yeah. What time of year? Summer. It was summer. Oh, yeah. it's tropical. And it's, it was fifty degrees. It's so fucking hot. Yeah. I was in Rome in uh, July. It's like yeah, 40, 48 